Alright fuckers, welcome to a brand new series here on Football Manager 2018. It's not really going to be a playthrough series or anything, but we're just going to go into the future in Scottish football and we're going to check individual teams and just see how they progress, see how they've got on, see what they've won, just to see how teams have basically developed over the years. So I've decided that we're going to do it in five year periods. So we'll start off with five years and then we'll move on to 10 years and then 20 years and we'll just see how teams um, progress over the years, how some teams meet their demise and well I guess we'll find out if Celtic will ever not win the league, will they get 10 in a row? Well we're about to find out right here. Uh, just before I get on to this though, a quick channel update. I've been fucking unactive lately for like the past 10 days, I apologise for that. Uh, on Friday I'm going to Scotland, my home, oh, I'm going back to my home country, man, I'm going to Edinburgh for a weekend, and, but when I get back on Monday, I can guarantee you, I will be doing YouTube full time from then, I'm, I'm currently, I'm going to cut down the hours in my job, so I'll no longer be working like 40 hours a week, which means I'll have a lot more time to work on other projects that are currently going on in my life, and more importantly, YouTube, yes, I, I love doing YouTube, and I want to upload you know, three or four feds a day at the moment we work and just having responsibilities, man, girlfriend, family, fucking pets, you know, and cleaning the house and, and stuff like that, man. I don't really get to commit as much time uh, to YouTube as I would like, but like I say, once I get back from Scotland, things will change and you can expect a full-time schedule. But anyway, enough about that. Let's get stuck, uh, stuck into the first team we're going to do in this series, and it is the most successful team in Scottish football history. It is Glasgow Rangers. Well, they might not be the most successful team in this game after a few more years, because, like I said, we're advancing into the future, so who knows how many titles Celtic will win. But anyway, enough about that. Let's just concentrate on Rangers first of all. So... We can see that Rangers are currently now a three and a half star team. Now I do believe they start off the game two and a half stars, so it looks like they've made a lot of progress over these five years. Uh, finances are secure. Owner loves the club. Season ticket holders have got forty four thousand eight hundred and seventy one. Now we'll have a quick look at the staff, and we'll see who's at the club, and then we'll check the current players, and we'll see what we'll see what's what. So you see, Dave King, still the chairman of the club. Didn't, maybe we didn't think that would be the case, but yes, man, Dave King still stuck in there, still uh, chairman of Rangers. We've got a few managing directors, not really sure about any of these people. One massive change, look at the manager. It's no longer Graham Murray, it's Derek McKinn. So Derek McKinn's turned down an opportunity to go to Rangers in real life, but it looks like he didn't turn down the same opportunity in Football Manager. He is the current Rangers manager. He's getting on £7,250 £7, a week. And it looks like he brought his assistant from Aberdeen as well, Tony Doherty. So it'll be interesting to see how Aberdeen are getting on, but we'll cover that in a, another video. And it looks like Graham Murray is still at the club. He's just been demoted, I guess, to coach. So let's check how he has got on here then. Hold on. Stats. Um, how do you check his, like, Fucking managerial shit. Uh, fuck me, come on. Yeah, uh, reserves manager, coach. Doesn't really say there, so I guess he's just, yeah, he's just back to being a coach. So he was the reserves manager, and I guess he just stepped down to his usual position once Derek McKins came in. Ah, uh, so there you go, big changes at Rangers there. We'll check out their players and see what they're like. So, we're starting off with the highest rated valued players, and look at this, Jesse Lingard, Man United's Jesse Lingard is now a Rangers player, holy fuck, he's 29 years old now in real life, 11 caps he's got for England, that's crazy, valued at 18.752 million, so obviously Rangers must be doing alright now if they can afford it players like Jesse Lingard, that's crazy, his stats aren't the best, I don't think so anyway, to value him at that much, but... Oh, that's what he is, so he's, he's, doing, he's doing really well there, I guess. Um, let's see here. Career stats. What the fuck was that, man? Uh, hold on. Where are we going? Career stats. 
So yeah, it looks like he jo he joined Rangers on a free, so that kind of explains why he's at Rangers, I guess. So the Rangers didn't go out and spend some massive fee on him. But still, that is crazy. Man United, that was, that was poor management for Man United. They must have just let his contract run down right till the end. And then Rangers have come in, signed him on a free. And he, I think he did pretty well there. If you look at that, five goals, three assists in 18 games, 7.13 rating. And then, uh, that's actually really good, that man. That's not bad in his first season at Rangers. Who else have they got? Fabio Cardozo. Still at the club, and he is now worth 13.25 million. I don't think he'll ever be worth 13.25 million in real life, but uh, there you go, man. Fabio Cardoso. Looks like, looks like he turns into a rather good player. They've got this guy, Turi Ab, Dean Henderson. Who the fuck's Dean Henderson? A young keeper. Was he at Rangers his whole career? No, it's another Man United player that Rangers signed. This time they've got him for 1.8 million. So. Looks like Rangers like the Man United players, but ah, he seems like a very good keeper to have. Got Stuart Dallas, the known Irishman, 7.5 million. When did they sign him? Signed him in the 2021 season. Looks like he did a good job. His average rating's pretty good. So I'm looking at this Rangers team, and it is much better than the team that they originally start with. It's got uh, Ryan Jack. Seems like he's been listed, 6 million. Asking price, he's valued at seven. We've got Marcus Madison, Greg Taylor for Kilmarnock. They've signed him. We've got Ryan Christie, oh, so set former Celtic player playing for Rangers. Greg Doherty. You're know, looking at this team. There's a lot of players I know there. So Rangers, it looks like they have done well over the season and they've assembled a very decent squad. Now, to me, this looks like a squad that can challenge Celtic. But the question is, has it challenged Celtic? Well, that's what we're going to go and find out now. We're going to go and look at how Rangers have did over the last five years, and we're going to see have they claimed that 55th league title. So in their first season, Rangers couldn't get the job done. They couldn't win the league, but they did finish second, which you know was probably their aim at the start of the season. But to finish a staggering 33 points behind Celtic, that will not um, please the Rangers board. Derek McKins did come in halfway through the season. And Graham Marty was obviously replaced. So maybe that's not a fair reflection of how Rangers did. You know, maybe if Derek McKins was there from the beginning of the season, could he have got them closer to Celtic? Well, we don't know. But what we do know is Rangers finished second. And they finished above their other rivals like Hearts, Aberdeen and Hibs and stuff like that. So good season there for Rangers. So in terms of transfers, they were pretty quiet. They didn't actually bring that many people in. They brought in a Scottish... Wonder Kid, I guess a lot of people said. Oliver McBurney for Swansea on loan. They brought in Calvin McLennan and Jamie Isles on a free. And Joe Schnonesse from St Johnston for 1.2. And that's a lot of million actually for the uh, defender who currently plays for Hibs at the moment. Value at 3.8. That's interesting. But Rangers paid 1.2 for him. So it'll be interesting to see how much they sold him on for. But like I said, Rangers not bringing in that many players in the first season. And now looking at that, I can see why maybe they finished so far behind Celtic because I think they need to bring in a lot more, you know, quality if they're going to try and compete at the top of the table. In terms of who did they let out, well, they let out a shitload of people on loan. You've got Burt, Berjonas, Rudin, Ross Lyon, Davy Bates. You know, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And that was it, really, just loan players. So you see, Rangers, first season, got a lot of the young players out on loan to you know, try and improve them, get them experience, and then just brought in a few players, um, most notably Joe Schnoisnet from St. Johnson for 1.2 million. Rangers did pretty well their first season back in Europe. You see, they advanced over Bangor City in the first Europe League qualifying round, 8 0 win at aggregate. Then SJK disposed of them 6 1, or Dabasi, they beat them 7 1 in aggregate. But unfortunately, when they got to the Euro Cup playoff to get into the group stage, they got a hard draw against Marseille, and then they lost 6-1 on aggregate. So Rangers doing pretty well. I think they get to the playoffs, albeit you could argue they got really lucky with the opposition and the draws. But they just came up against Marseille and couldn't get the job done. But we all know Marseille, quality team, a lot better than Rangers. They managed to get to the semi-final of the Betfred Cup. 
where the run was ended by rival Celtic. Ryan Jack got the opening goal for Rangers, but Callum McGregor cancelled that out, and then late on, Johnny Hayes got the win to put Celtic into the final. So that must have been disappointing for Rangers fans to swallow. And then in the Scottish Cup, fourth round, they defeated St. Johnson 3-0 away. Good result there to move on to the fifth round, where they were yet again beat by Celtic. And Celtic again ending their hopes in another cup run. You had Scott Sinclair, a Jan Anwick on goal and a Paddy Roberts goal putting Celtic 3-0 up. Then Aaron Neyman got a late constellation for Rangers but with four minutes to go there was never any real time for Rangers to get back in this. So yeah there you go man Rangers first season at least to finish second but that's probably the only successful thing you can say about it, Graham Murray was sacked halfway through the season. They didn't get into the uh, group stages of the Europa League. And they got knocked out of both cups by their fierce rival Celtic. So, a disappointing first season for Rangers. But the second season seen a bit more success for Rangers. Yeah, again, they did finish second to eventual league winners Celtic. They won't be happy about that. But what they will be happy about is the fact that they cut the gap just down to 7 points so I mean 33 to 7 that is a huge gap there that Rangers have uh, brought the points down by so definitely they have improved we'll check out who they brought in they must have brought you've got to assume that they brought in a bunch of players or perhaps it was just Derek McKinn's first full season has he worked his wonders and has he got Rangers turned them into a lot more competitive team we'll find out so here we can see I think this explains why Rangers were a lot closer to Celtic Look at the amount of players Rangers have brought in. Derek McKinn certainly was busy in these transfer windows. You've got Greg Taylor coming in from Kilmarnock, 825k. You've got uh, Cameron Domigan, Callum Smith, Matthew Kennedy, Harry Bunt, Christian Bielik coming in on loan for Arsenal. Dylan McHugh, good player, 550k for Hibs. You've got Ethan Ostuma and Sam Wardrobe coming in, free transfers. J. Rock Groat coming on loan for Leeds. Ian Wilson coming in for come on. You got Ali Crawford, who must have let, uh, Hamilton must have let his contract run down. Rangers bottom in a free. And right at the bottom, look at that. Ashley Young. He's he's retired now, but Ashley Young back then, he'd have still been a decent player. And definitely a great player for Rangers to sign. Uh looks they got him in January there, so all in all, man, great. They only spent 2.6 million, yet they acquired all those players, so that is really good for Rangers. Now, who did they let out? They let out Lee Hodson. He went to Peterborough. Josh Windass, I'm surprised about that. They got rid of Josh Windass. Also got rid of Harry Forrester. Uh, Joe Dododo. Got, uh, let him go as well. Andy Halliday, 175k. So you could see that mostly just their fringe players Rangers got rid of here. And then they've also loaned out a shitload of players. Uh, only 625k in total. So again, it looks like this was a transfer window where Rangers definitely improved their team. So I'm not surprised that they finished a lot closer to Celtic. And how did the new look Rangers squad have effect in the Cups? Well, as you can see, they turned round a uh, second qualifying leg defeat to Maki Tele Ave, and they managed to actually beat them 2 0 in advance into. The third round, so they did well to come back there. In the third round, they got Basha Shikir, and they disposed of them 5 1 in aggregate. Uh, fourth qualifying round, they got a tough tie here against Braga. They lost the away tie, the away leg 2 1, but managed to win the home tie 1 0 and advanced through on the away goal. So Rangers, for the first time in is it like seven years? are back into European football and they will be participating in Europa League group stages. So who how did they get on? What have we got here? What have we got here? They got Group D, they got Basel, Cologne and Club Club Bruges. Pretty difficult group there. First game away, the one in Switzerland, two one. Uh second game at home, they got two 0 one over Cologne. Rangers on fire here at the moment. Uh they followed that up with an away defeat the Club Bruges unfortunately. The return leg at Ibrox, a 2-2 draw with Club Bruges, so 7 points after 4 games, not bad. Um, then they beat Basel at home, 3-1. And then their final game they lost to Cologne, 2-0, so 10 points out of 
six games. I'm pretty sure that must be enough to take them into the knockout stages. And you can also see in the Betfred Cup, they managed to get all the way to the final where once again they lost to Celtic. So that is Rangers officially out the three cups from the first season and obviously the Betfred Cup this season. They've been knocked out by Celtic every single time. So Celtic look like they're the only team that are stopping Rangers from winning trophies again because they're finishing in the front of them in the league and they're smashing them every time they could draw them in the cup. So Rangers looks like they're cl getting close to winning ways but just can't get past Celtic. Strange. Right, now let's check out, did they get into the next stage of the Europa League? Ah, they did. So on oh, Scottish Cup fourth round, they beat Livingston, then Dundee, the advance to the semis, is that, or the quarterfinals? Um, Europa League, first knockout, round leg, they drew, got drawn with Wolfsburg, and they beat them 2-0. They beat them 2-0 at Ibrox, and then in the away leg, they lost 1-0, so they advanced. fanced. They actually had fans. holy shit, Rangers got into it the last 16 of the Europa League, and they beat Celtic 3-1 in the Scottish Cup quarterfinal. Uh, Scott Sinclair got the Celtic goal, but Eduardo Herrera with a hat trick for Rangers instantly you feel becoming a legend uh, with the Rangers fans. So fucking hell, this second season, this could. T I was saying it was a, a mess season, but I didn't know how Rangers were actually going to go in the cups. Holy fuck, Derek McKins is a god here. Just how far can he go? Ah nah, shit. So the second knockout uh, round of the Europa League, they got drawn against Tottenham. They've lost that two 0 at Ibrox, and I think, I pretty much feel this is the end of the journey. Yeah, they lost the away leg 3-0 at White Hart Lane, so there you go, 5-0 in aggregate, but to, they did very well to get there, and you, you only feel that Rangers are going to improve after this, and they'll have another crack at the Europa League next year, you feel. Uh, but they should get a decent amount of money from get, for getting that far. Scottish Cup semi-final, they beat Mullerwell to advance to the final, so... Is the Derek McKinn's going to win his first trophy here as Rangers manager? We're about to find out. And they did. Derek McKinn's beat his old team in the final. Aberdeen. Goals from Christian Bielek and Edo Hararo gave Rangers a 2-0 lead. Stevie May got one back for Aberdeen, but they couldn't complete the uh, comeback. And Rangers have won their first trophy. And it only took them, what, two years in the game. So there you go. That's not bad at all. Derek McKinn's coming in and having success straight off the bat there. Uh, Got to give a lot of credit to him. So, definitely, I wasn't expecting that, man. I'll be honest. A, a really good run there in the Europa League, knocking out Celtic, closing the gap right down to Celtic in the SPL as well. So, it looks like Derek McKinn's. Looks like he, he will be the Rangers manager for the foreseeable future. I'd say he's already a success. And just how many more years will it take Derek McKinn's to catch Celtic? Could be next year. Let's find out. Okay, so this is really surprising. Here you can see third season in the Scottish Premiership and Rangers have ended up finishing fourth. So after finishing second twice back to back, uh, Rangers have dropped two places this year. And I'm shocked at that, considering that last year they finished second. They, got, they cut the gap to Celtic down to seven points. They had that really good run in the Europa League. They won the Scottish Cup final, knocking out Celtic and beating Aberdeen in the final. Uh, for them to end up finishing fourth, man, that is pretty, um, that is, that's a shocker. Now, don't get me wrong, they didn't finish fourth by much. They only finished a point behind Hibernian and four points behind second place Hearts. 13 points behind Celtic. So, I mean, it's not like they had a, I wouldn't say they had a horrible season, but, I mean, that is, that is a shocker. I did expect them. To at least finish second again and perhaps even, you know, close the gap to Celtic once more. But they didn't. Now it's time to see where Rangers went wrong. We'll check how they did in Europe first. Normally I show the transfers, but we'll check how they did in the Cups and stuff. And then we'll look at the transfers. So, then see Rangers not having much trouble there. Getting into the Europa League group stages again pretty comfortably. They got wins over Jaganella. Wins over Omania and then they um, got a free to win over Young Boys and Aggregate. So, a pretty easy draw there for Rangers, I'll be honest. Maybe that's why they're getting into the Europa League group stage, but who knows? Who did they get in it though? That's the, that's the question. They got Bruce Edmund Glodden back, who they got a disappointing 4 1 thumping at Ibrox. Not a good start. Second game, they, oh my god, they were drawn with Tottenham as well. They got humped 3 0 at White Hart Lane. 
And then in their third game against Brondi, they got beat fucking 3-2 at Ibrox. So, three games and three losses. I think it's safe to say the Rangers will not be advancing past the group stage. And they've definitely went backwards compared to what they did last season. Did pick up 2-1 win away in Denmark, though, which was pretty good. Picked up, uh, they got beat in Germany against the Mugladenbach. They lost the Betfred Cup final 2-0 to the Hibs. And then they got finished off by Tottenham in the last game of the group stage. So three, uh, three points for a possible 18 in the Europa League. It was a difficult group, but you feel that Rangers would have liked to perform slightly better in it. Scottish Cup, fourth round. They got beat by Dundee United in the fourth round. So there you go, man, Rangers. Oh, and then when they're going to the top six, look at their form there on the top six. Terrible. Four wins out of five. That is that's poor. That's very poor. And uh, Rangers had a really bad season there, man. Really bad indeed. We'll check out the transfers, find out what went wrong. So again, you see Rangers bringing in another Arsenal loanee, Jeffy Rene Adelaide. They brought in Anthony O'Connor. Very good player for Aberdeen. They brought in George Boyd for 1.2 million at Sheffield Wednesday. Brought in Connor Mc McCanley from Fleetwood. So Rangers again were busy in the transfer market. Um... 2.6 million spent. Now, who did they let go? Maybe this is why they were poor. So, Ross McCrory on a free to Dundee. Really? Liam Kelly on a free. They sold Graham Dorans. They sold Michael O'Halloran. Um, is that it? They sold Matthew Kennedy to Preston. Robbie McCrory went to Aberdeen. West Fordham went to Leeds. Uh, holy shit. So, they go. Rangers are actually selling quite a lot of their players. And quite a lot of key players there, I think. Definitely wouldn't ex expect that many of them guys to go there. Well, can Rangers bounce back then in their fourth season? Let's go find out. To be honest, after that, I'm, I'm pretty, I think they've weakened the squad a lot there. So it'll be interesting to see how they do here. Instead of going to the league table, instead of going to the Cups, I think I'm going to go straight to next year's transfers first and then... Probably the easiest way, and then we'll we'll make a we'll judge from the, how the transfers went whether we think they had a successful season or not. So they brought in Rory Hendry on a free. I'm looking at these players. Liam Henderson is that Hibernian's Liam Henderson? It might be. Yeah, he's fucking fucking at nine million. It must be him. Dean Henderson for Man United. Craig Bryson for Derby. Looks like there's a few good players they brought in here. Hal Robson, Canu, Michael Shaw, Stuart Dallas. So Rangers again bringing it. Fabian Delph. Holy shit. Rangers definitely bringing in loads of players. 5.5 million spent. But again, it looks like they've uh, sold a few. Who do we have here? Jordan Rosser leading on a free. Ashley Young left on a free. That's not good. Brian Fodderham left. Who else left? Ehorn Utumzer left. He went to Barnsley for 2.5 million. That was a good bit of business for Rangers. Uh, Carlos Pena left, he went to Cruz or Soul for 1.2 and they just brought Connor McLe uh, McAuley in and he's, he's already left them the next season less than a year at Rangers, he went to Barnsley there for um, over a million pounds so Rangers again spending 5.5 million but they're, they're, they're balancing it out with the players that they've sold so I don't know, it's just, I don't know how this is going to be for Rangers will it be a successful season, let's see Okay, so on the basis of the league, it looks like it's been a much better season for Rangers. They've bounced back, finished in second place again, and they have cut the gap back down to Celtic to just seven point eight points, should I say. Eight points. Fucking hell, man. What's happened to my maths here? Mathematic brain's on fire. Um, Right, so eight points, the gap to Celtic. They've definitely you know, reduced that there and finishing back in front of Hibernian and Hearts, unlike last season, so... Looks like a better season for Rangers. Oh, yeah, that, just um, on a side note there, both Dundee teams got relegated. Interesting. Interesting indeed. So, they not couldn't quite deliver a league title for Rangers. Uh, Derek, Murray, Derek McKins in his third, full, uh, his third full season. But let's see how he did in the Cups. Okay, so disappointing in Europe. You can see straight off the bat, convincing Two win it leg win over Surich where they six 0 on aggregate, but then they were drawn against Valencia in the fourth qualifying stage of Europa League and they lost six 0 on aggregate. So they won 
Six 0 in aggregate against Surridge, but then they lost six 0 in aggregate against Valencia. Tough draw, but you know uh, what shit happens, and they had to beat them, and they didn't. So, Pesh got knocked out the quarter final of the Betfred Cup by Morton two three three two. That's Pesh. That's awful. And then the fourth cup, the Scottish running got knocked out against Alloa. So fuck me, terrible season there for Rangers. Um, it was good in terms of the league, they got back to second place, they cut the gap down to Celtic again, but in the Cups, man, shocking. Absolutely shocking. Um, knocked out of the Betfred Cup by Morton and knocked out of the Scottish Cup by Alloa. That's fucking terrible, guys. Right, let's move on to the fifth and final season and see if Rangers can get that 55th league title. Alright, so Rangers, you can see they've been busy bringing in freeze and look at that, Sammy Nasri, really? Fucking Sammy Nasri. That's crazy. He doesn't even play for Rangers anymore, so he must have been there less than a season. Martin Olsen brought him in on a free. Uh, look at who else have they got? Jesse Lingard. Jesse Lingard on a free. He still plays for them, we know that. That's crazy. Ryan Christie, 2.3 million from Aberdeen. What kind of players Ryan Christie turned into? Ah, his stats, his stats do look good. Still not been capped by Scotland, though I find that very fucking strange. 27 years old, he's not had a cap for Scotland. That's that's mental. I don't agree with that whatsoever, like, but who's, who the fuck's the Scottish manager? I mean, I'd be sending him death threats, like, if he, if he had not been picked by now. Billy Davis, on Billy Davis, pick, sort it out, man. Fucking try and get Ryan Christie a, a cap. Right, anyway, let's check, go back to Rangers here. They brought in Ryan Christie, and it's at the end of their... T- yeah, really, they brought in a bunch of players, like, but... I'm just only, I'm only going to go over the most notable ones. I'm not going to go through the whole fucking list. Uh, Beerman got low left on a free. Jamie Barjonas went to Hib Bernie for one million. What else happened here? Uh, what else happened? What else happened? What else happened? Not a lot. Danny... F- oh, my players leaving here. Shit, that Fabian Delph left. James Tavernier left for only 215k. And Sammy Nasri left for 150. So, Sammy Nasri just joined. Sammy Nasri, <laughs> he lasted less than six months at Rangers. He fucking did a Joey Barton, man. Pish. So there you go. There's the transfers. I'll be honest, based on them, I don't see them challenging Celtic. In my opinion, just. I mean, they signed F- Fabi, they signed like Nasri, and he didn't even get to see it at the end of the season. Shocking. So, it'll be interesting to see how they go on, but I don't think that team's going to be good enough to beat Celtic. Let's find out. So, nope, there you go, five years into Scottish football and Celtic are still the dominant team. Rangers could only manage a second place finish, but they did cut the gap down to just five points this season and that is the closest Rangers have got in these five years. So, not a lot then separating both the teams. It'll be interesting if Rangers got on in the cup, but you maybe you feel that Rangers now have closed the gap. They've went from second finishing eight points behind, second finishing five points behind, I wonder how they'd go on next season. We won't know because this is the fifth and final year. But it looks like maybe Rangers are alright in the future. Perhaps they win that title sooner rather than later. But let's see how they go on in the other competitions. Okay, so straight off the bat, I can see that Rangers were actually in the Champions League qualifiers. Which must have meant the coefficients went up since the start. Because um, Rangers finished second. So Scotland must have got back into the top 16 of the Scottish coefficient, which is fucking great, man. Fantastic. That's what we want. Two teams back in the Champions League. Unfortunately, they weren't in it for long. Lost in the first qualifying, well, the third qualifying round, but their first attempt. Lost 4-2 on aggregate to Senna. Senna? Senate? Since Petersburg. Fuck me, Jimmy. Pronounce the names, god damn it. Pronounce the fucking names. It's not difficult. Well, maybe for me, like, but... <laughs> come on. Right, anyway, they lost that Champions Cup quali- third qualifying round leg, which meant they dropped into the Europa League. We'll cover that in a minute. Um, beat Aberdeen in the Betfred Cup quarter final, which is no bad. Who did they get in the Europa League? Let's find out here. They got Sue Wagarem, who they beat. Yes, I know I'm butchering these names, man, but fuck it, they'd probably butcher my name. Actually, people do butcher my name all the time, not got a clue how to pronounce it, so fuck it. If you butcher my name, I'll butcher your name, and I'll date ten times worse, so fuck, there you go. So, Wagger M lost 3-0 to the Rangers, then Bestikas got a 1-1 draw away, and then a 2-1 win over Legia Warsaw, so this is looking good. This is looking like Rangers, seven points at the first three games, looks like Rangers 
are in pole position here to get out of the uh, Betfred group stage. Uh, beat Celtic in the Betfred, no, Europa League group stage, not the fucking Betfred group stage, I'm in that. Uh, they beat Celtic on penalties in the Betfred Cup semi-final. So the Rangers are in the final, can they add another trophy to their cabinet? Got uh, another 1-1 draw there, this time with Legia. Then they lost to Soap Wagram, 2-1 away. They beat Hearts 4-1 in the Betfred Cup final. Great performance there from Hot Rangers. Goals from Odsed, Herrera, Sanalas and Liam Henderson. Jay Quitongo got the goal for Hearts. I've actually recently signed him in my Hearts Football Manager playthrough. So um, that should be interesting if he develops, guys. Let's see, what what does he look like right now? Fouled at 2 million. Funny, he's Portuguese. When I signed him, he's Scottish. He must, he must just choose to play for Portugal instead of Scotland. Can't really blame him. Scotland are pish, but, but still, he's a wee traitor bastard. I suppose he's not a real Scotsman anyway. What do you mean he's not a real Scotsman? That's race. Well, come on, man. Jay Quintongo. It's hardly a fucking Scottish sounding name. Plus, he is black, and most Scotsmen I've met have been white like, you know what I mean? So, there you go. But anyway, uh, another draw away. Bestigas 1 1. So, Rangers, what, picking up 9 points out of their. Oh, wait, no, they beat. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm... Ah, 3 0 against Bestigas. So, I think they got. What did they get in total? Was it. 11 points, that should be enough to get them through. Scottish Cup, they're into the 5th round, beat St. Ra. And then they beat Kilmarnock, so now they're into the quarterfinals. Ah, uh, they got Florentina in the next round, the knockout, first knockout round of the Europa League. And they drew with them 1-1 away, so good away goal there. Taking the tie back to Ibrox, can they finish it off? Can they finish it off? Oh, they can! Beating Florentina 2-1 at Ibrox, that means Rangers now into the 2nd. Knockout leg here, second round of the Europa League. Can they go further than they did in that second season? Scottish Cup quarter final. They got a replay against Partick Thistle. A 1 1 home draw against Galatasaray at Ibrox. And then a 1 0 away win in Turkey. Holy shit, Rangers into the quarter finals of the Europa League. Then they beat Partick Thistle in the Scottish Cup quarter final replay. Rangers on fucking fire this season, man. Um, who did they get? Who did they get? Athletic ball. Oh my god, I think that's it coming to an end now. Balbao, tough team to beat. Lost 1 0 in Spain. And then they lost 2 0 in Glasgow. So Rangers finally got out of the Europa, uh, Europa League group. Hey, like, I'm going to kill myself, man. I just can't speak today. Don't know fucking why. Oh, what am I doing here? Right. They finally went out of the Europa League. Quarter final stage, all right, man. Four two on aggregate to Athletic Bilbao. Very good attempt by Rangers. They had a great run to get to that stage. I don't think many people would have expected that from them. But the Europa League Cup run has came to an end. Scottish Cup final, semi final. They beat Hearts two 0 at Hamden to add fans to the final. Um, they were doing really well in the the top six split, beating everybody until they lost to Celtic in the last game of the season. Holy shit! Can you imagine if that was a title decider? It was Marco Choking who got the goal there for Celtic. How did they get on in the cup semi? The fight, no, the cup final. They lost two two to Hibs. So there you go, another loss there, and Rangers have been denied another cup in the final. But all in all, man, how do you think Rangers have got on this series? In the first five years, do you think it's been a success for them? You know what? I'd say it would be. I mean, out of the um, finished what fourth? No, finished second four times out of the five seasons. They did well in Europe a few of the seasons, and they won a couple of cups along the way, man. So I'd say that's pretty successful. Let's just check here. What cups did they win? Scottish Cup. Won the Scottish Cup in 2019. And the Bet Fred Cup, they won that in 2021. So there you go, Rangers adding two trophies. Runners ups to the Bet Fred Cup in 18 and 19. Runner up in the Scottish Cup in 18 and 19 as well. And 22. So, I mean, it could, Derek McKins could have added a shitload more trophies to his Rangers cabinet, but he didn't. He only got the two. But still, man, I think him finishing second, three out of the four years he was in charge of Rangers. And then. The two good cup, the Europa League Cup runs, and then the two cups, the Betfred Cup and the Scottish Cup. I'd say that's been a good, successful five years for Rangers. Now, obviously, down the line, I will be doing Scottish football in ten years, 
and we'll see if Rangers can finally get the 55th league title. But before that, I plan on doing a whole host of Scottish teams. So let me know, guys, down below, did you enjoy this series? Is it something you want to see continue? If so, which team would you like me to see doing next? I'm thinking about maybe doing Celtic next, or perhaps Aberdeen, or would you like to see Hearts, Hibernian next, or would you like to see maybe a lower team from um, maybe the Scottish Premiership Leagues? Let me know, guys, and I'll be back next time with that video. But until then, I've been Son of Scotland 98. Rangers are still stuck on 54 titles, but could have been worse. The club could have been fucking liquidated and they could have lost all their titles. At least you've still got 54 fuckers. Until next time, peace.